Live from the Bob Levy Broadcast Center, overlooking the Tom's River, it's time to get up, get out, do something. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Be a part of the show, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Hey, welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin, 609, Friday, November 4th, 49 degrees, getting up to 60 today. WOBM AM 1160, 1310 News Talk Radio, streaming live on the radio pop app at WOBMAM.com, 732-505-1160 to join the conversation. We are now joined in the studio by Colonel David Sanders, the third, is that true? The third, absolutely. The third, the third. yes. The third, and, and which makes it a lot easier, by the way, because when you have kids, just giving them the same name, generation after generation, so much easier than this whole discussion, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So, Colonel David Sanders, you are uh, you are uh, uh, with the Army, and you are stationed here at the Joint Base uh, MDL, right? I am. I'm the commander of 174th Infantry Brigade. Okay, uh, we're Combined Arms Training Brigade, and uh, we work throughout the uh, entire Northeast. Actually, we got. We support uh, National Guard and Reserve training opportunities throughout the uh, Northeast. I mean, we cover units uh, from Virginia all the way up through uh, all the way up through Maine. Cool, cool. And so, uh, at the joint base here, though, uh, the Army. Uh, is, uh, I want to say, are you in the minority a little bit? Abs- yes, we're 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 in the minority on the joint base. That's for sure. A yeah, because it's Air Force. it's Air Force. It's heavily Air Force, right? Heavily uh, uh, because of the. You know, it's it's a lot of support, a lot of support, right, for yeah. uh, for air uh, air mobility. Absolutely, it's, it's the air mobility. Uh, the air mobility is absolutely key to the joint base here. Uh, we are we are a minority, uh, but we do have every contingent from the uh, Navy, uh, you know, Coast Guard and Marines there. Right. Uh, so it it is a true joint base. Very cool, and so. Uh, how long have you been at this base? Because I know that's the such is the life of, uh, of 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 the military that you don't spend too much time in one spot, right? So how long have you been here? No, absolutely. I've only been here about six months. I took command in uh, in May. Okay. Uh, but we have actually been gone. I hadn't been on base a whole lot. We've been uh, out training. I uh, took over in May, and we've uh, been traveling a whole lot. Spend right. about two to two and a half weeks a month on the road. Uh, out of training opportunities with the uh, with the reserve component uh, right. throughout the Northeast. Well, so. amazingly, uh, you've already clearly adapted the New Jersey accent. So I mean, it's it's <laughs> I don't know how that's happened so fast, but it's uh, it's obvious that you've been indoctrinated here. So so previous to Jersey, where were you before that? Uh, I was actually at Fort Hood, Texas. Okay. Uh, now I'm originally a Texan. I'm from Texas. Okay. Uh, where in little, Texas? I'm from a little town called Holotus, Texas, which is west northwest of San Antonio. Okay. Uh, now. Back when I grew up, it was its own little town, uh, but like many areas in the country, San Antonio is now pretty much engulfed Holotus, Texas. Right. So. Gotcha. Oh, so 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 you're uh, you're you're deep in the heart of wall wall territory. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> That's all we'll say on that. Uh, so so Fort Hood was that? Uh, were you somewhere else besides that? Oh, I've uh, I've been stationed in Fort Hood, uh, Texas, uh, Fort Riley, Kansas, Fort Benning, Georgia, Fort Stewart, Georgia, 10th Mountain Division up at Fort Drum, New York. Uh, so I, I've been pretty much all over. How long have you been in the military in general? I've in been the Army? In 24 years. 24 now. years. Yes. Wow, and you look like such a young guy. So what, you started like eight, nine years old? <laughs> Not quite. No. Uh, right. I came in the Army uh, right out of Texas A&M, uh, went straight Aggies. in as a second lieutenant. Yes, I'm an Aggie. Um, right out of Texas A&M and uh, headed straight to Fort Benning, Georgia. All right, so wait a second. So you go to Texas A&M, right? Now, yeah. Texas A&M, A&M is agriculture and mining, right? So it's a- Agriculture and mechanical. Mechanical. Yeah. My, mining. What the hell am I thinking? What is this, like 1902? <laughs> right? Like, you know, you're going to wear your little hat with the little uh, with the light on it. So, okay. So agriculture and mechanical. So, so theoretically... That was what was your what were you going to college for? Uh, I, in in fact, I was in the Corps Cadets at Texas A and M, oh, okay. which is actually one of the you know the highlights of my life. That was an absolutely spectacular program, and and, uh, and the the character in which it was instilled there as a cadet, uh, you know, do not lie, cheater, still, and you know, I mean, just that that right that level of uh, and that level of pain they put you through there kind of starts to build character. Uh, after a while, right? Uh, but uh, and I always wanted to go in the army, and I knew I was really? going to go in the army. Yes, and so uh, I had started off uh, an agriculture economics major, and I went to this uh, 
uh, training program that they put through called Summer Camp, where all ROTC cadets go through. Right. And I did pretty well there, and so I said, "Hey, I got. I'm going to be able to get in the army after this," and that became my focus. And uh, so, 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 did you have a military family at all? I do. Okay. Uh, our actually, our our family history goes back to. Uh, we can actually trace it all the way back to the Civil War. Okay. Uh, on both sides, uh, family on both sides. Okay. And uh, and you know, my grandfather was uh, actually started off Army Air Corps, was served in World War II. Really. Uh, and then. Uh, uh, we like to. I like to joke with the Air Force guys out the base. You know, you were Army at one time, uh, <laughs> right? But right. Um, that's by the way. That's what I. I. You know, I'm Jewish, so that's why I say to all Christians. <laughs> I'm like, you know, geez. Anyway, we, that's a whole different conversation. Uh, I'm moving I'm right along. Go yeah, there. No, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. But uh, and then my dad was uh, served in Vietnam as a company commander on one of the most famous battles in, in Vietnam called Hamburger Hill. Right. Yeah. And so he was also went to Texas A and M. So you know, it kind of. We, we've got a family history of it. Uh, I knew I wanted to go in uh, really from a young age, and uh, that's what I pursued, and that's what I did. Well, you know, I'm going to go out on a limb and, and say uh, that you probably didn't get beat up very much in school when you were growing up, right? I mean, you you were, you were you, 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 uh, you come off to me like you were a pretty tough cat all your life, like you were ready. This is how you were you were born to like go do this, right? I, I don't know about that, but let's just say I was able to hold my own. Yeah, back I, I figured. Day. I'm like, you know, because I, I, I'm looking at you. I'm like, that would have been one of those guys who would have definitely. Uh, I would have, you know, I would have been on the wrong side of that fight every time because I was not that kid. So anyway, but we'll move right along. I was, you know, the drama and uh, and and uh, chess club <laughs> kid, right? So yeah, so there you go, uh, Zach. We are coming up against it, right? All right. So when we come back, okay. Right, I kind of want to hear um, a little bit of day to day, like what you do. Okay. Right, because I mean, you're saying that you've been out a lot, right? You're all you're c- kind of touring the world, right? And uh, I want, but I want to know what a typical day might look like for you, because I think uh, I think that we have different cons- uh, perceptions of what happens day to day in the military, right? Uh, so let's talk about that when we get back. Colonel David Sanders, the third, back <laughs> after this. Rush Limbaugh today at noon. More Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin coming up next. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Hey, welcome back. Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin, 621. Uh, Okay, so tell me, uh, Colonel Sanders. I I can't even say that. I'm so sorry. Uh, Colonel, tell me what it is. What is a typical day? And that's probably, you probably can't even say there's a typical day, but what does an average day look like? Well, there there is absolutely no typical day in the Army. I mean, there's always new challenges. uh, There, you know, New mission sets that that are given, and, and we have to we have to go execute. So I'll kind of give you a, a typical day that that we go through uh, on back here, if this sounds good, and then what we do out when we go do our job out uh, out uh, when we go when we go train. Okay. So in the morning we always uh, start off Pete at uh, with physical training, uh, physical fitness at zero six thirty in the morning. Right. And we do that uh, anywhere between an hour and an hour and a half of of that. Uh, usually a functional fitness type event. Um, and then uh, we move in, uh, get charred up, come in, uh, and then we have a couple of meetings every day because you know things change and yeah. uh, we always have to be adapting. And so I'll you know catch a couple of briefs from the operations officer or or the uh, supply officer or my executive officer. Uh, on what we have going, what's changed, uh, we'll go over where we stand as a brigade. Where you know, our, our just kind of standard stuff, and then we always have planning going on because we're planning multiple events uh, for the year. And in fact, I'm I'm getting a brief to this afternoon on uh, on an event we we got in May, uh, and we're starting to plan in because that's about how far out you right. have to plan. Uh, and then when we go out and we train, uh, we'll, we'll you know get to wherever we're going, say Fort Indian Town Gap, Pennsylvania. Uh, you get up in the morning. Uh, we head out to the woods uh, with the units that we're supporting. Uh, we help coach, teach, and mentor them throughout the day as we're going. And we may even go upwards to two, three o'clock in the morning with just a few hours of sleep over a four or five day period. Uh, in the summertime, uh, we usually go through more extended training periods, uh, say, for two to three weeks, where, you know, uh, during those two to three weeks, you're operating on about three to four hours of sleep a night wow. as you're constantly training and moving for uh, planning and training for combat operations. So uh, that's kind of a typical day uh, wow. for the 174th Infantry Brigade. Right. Now, tell me, 
again, because this is just th- – this is uh, a couple questions. So last night, I want to know – last night you were telling me in the break, and I just – I want you to repeat it. Okay. So, oh, so you knock off work around 1,800 last night, right? Yeah, around, okay. around 1,800. 1,800. See, I'm, I'm, I'm catching the lingo now. I'm trying. So oh, yeah. at what, at what did you do What did you do after that? What was your, what was your night? Because I know what I did. I, I went home. I put on a tuxedo. I went over to a Girl Scout dancing event. I, uh, I judged an event, watched my wife dance, had a few adult beverages, came home, and uh, went to sleep. Uh, was that kind of like your night? Well, I'm learning now. I got to watch what I say when uh, <laughs> when we're on the break here. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, no, actually. So uh, my wife cooked a, a pot roast. is uh, was absolutely delicious. But then uh, a few nights ago, I had uh, harvested uh, harvested a deer. I'm a big outdoorsman, right? And uh, I had to uh, butcher my deer. Right. So, so when you say harvested a deer, that's a that's an interesting uh, it's an interesting term. Does that means that you. Uh, you um you spent some quality time with that deer, right? I mean, just you know, and and you know, the end of that deer's you know life at the at the moment. And, for, and yes. Well, y- yeah. Yes. yes. And and you know, every everything's a blessing for us, and uh, as, as we go down, and and uh, it's uh, absolutely. Some of the best, uh, some of the best meat you'll ever eat. Absolutely. Listen, I'm with you, Zach. Doesn't that so? Zach over there is a vegetarian, uh, and so we always <laughs> we always have that discussion. I, for one, although I'm certainly not a, a hunter or you know, I I believe that we didn't fight for thousands of years to get to the top of the food chain so we could eat twigs and berries. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think that you know I'm a, I'm a, I'm a certainly a carnivore. Uh, I just don't know. I'm pretty sure that if it was me versus deer, deer's going to win. You yeah, know what I'm well, saying? That's well, all I got to say. Well, Zach would starve at the Sanders house. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> Zach would starve. Now, so that's, that brings up that brings me to my other uh, question. You know, you talk about your day. <clears throat> so, you know, at no point did you mention what the uh, what the food looks like. How is it? Is it is it okay? In the <laughs> is it all right? Hey, Army Chow is Army Chow. Yeah. Uh, no, absolutely. We we do everything we can to provide the best food. Because, yeah. uh, an Army marches on his stomach. I thought I heard uh, somebody say one time <laughs> in the past. And uh, our our Chow is actually pretty good. And, and compared to what it was back when I was a young lieutenant, our well, we have our MRE, so our acronym. Oh. Meal ready to eat. Yeah, that's and great. So four thousand with... calories of goodness. <laughs> oh, well, back in the day, yeah, they were not quite as good as they are today. And they're not good now, by the way. <laughs> oh, I'm just on. letting you know. I'm not a. I'm not. I mean, I mean, listen. First of all, I it's unnatural to like have some kind of heating element that you like put water in, shake it up, and like it heats your food, right? Because I burn myself every time I try to eat one, <laughs> and then it's like. It's like sticky gooiness over and over again, isn't it? I mean, there's a lot going on there. Look, it, it, when you've eaten them in the past, yeah. back in, if there's any old Army guys out there listening, back in the brown bag MRE days, uh, these are way better uh, and, uh, than what we had back then. Right. So... Okay, gotcha. Uh, <laughs> good stuff. All right, when we come back, uh, we are going to give you your magic wand, right, and okay. uh, and and see what you do with it, and uh, you know, talk a little more about uh, about life uh, here at uh, Joint Base McGuire Dix Lakers. Colonel David Sanders the third. Wake up with Jerry Grunted back after this. The news is next. Live from the WOBM Newsroom, the Town Square, New Jersey News Network, and Fox News Radio. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Live from Town Square Towers at the heart of the Jersey Shore. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Get up, get out, do something. Join the conversation. 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Hey, welcome back. Wake up with Jerry Grunin. 635, Friday, November 4th, 49 degrees, getting up to 60 today. WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. News Talk Radio, streaming live on the radio pop app at WOBMAM.com. 732-505-1160. Join the conversation. We are joined by Colonel David Sanders the third. Uh, who is uh, in the uh, Army uh, at the Joint Base mcguire Dix Lakehurst. And so, okay, so as a colonel, uh, what what's how many like direct reports do you have? How big's the whole uh, your whole group? Well, we've actually we've got that we're a combination. Uh, we have uh, you know the diff- they're called different compos, but we have uh, in the brigade 
We have a combination of National Guard soldiers, Reserve Component soldiers, okay. and active soldiers. So I've got uh, five active duty battalions, uh, and I've got another five reserve battalions that, that, that work under the brigade. Uh, each of those are commanded by a lieutenant colonel. And uh, so we, we, we've got a pretty large organization, and we're spread out. I've got the majority of them on the joint base itself, but I have two uh, outliers. I've got one out of Coropolis, Pennsylvania, right by the airport uh, okay. in Pittsburgh, and I have one down at Fort Meade, Maryland. So, so 10 different groups— Right. Yep. So, how many? How, how many? How big is that in general? Like, I, like ballpark? Oh, um, it's uh, it's quite a large organization. Is it? You know, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you know, the thing is, it it's really comes. It you know, span of control is, is tough. And, yeah. And uh, you know, being a commander is is like one of the greatest privileges that you can get in the army. Sure. Uh, you know, you are charged with with being responsible for everything a unit does and fails to do. And, yeah. and it's all on your head uh, at, at every level of command. And, and you know, I've always told my guys, uh, you are appointed, not anointed, because uh, when you're a commander, you, will, uh, you have quite a bit of power. And uh, so you need to make sure that uh, you use that judiciously, that you make the right decisions, and that you lead your folks right. You right. Know? I mean, you got to take care of your soldiers and uh, and they'll take care of you. They'll take care of the mission. Wow. So yeah. I mean that that's you're you know look it's great I, the whole leadership thing. Did you did you always know you wanted to get into leadership, um, or were you? I mean, is that what was that kind of your goal? Did you did you look at it like I think a lot of folks when they get into jobs or mm-hmm. careers, yep. you know they're they're looking at how do I you know how do I advance? How do I advance? Then there's other people who say, no, I don't want to advance. I don't want, you know, I don't want the additional responsibility or the additional, uh, the you know, more on my plate. Did you always know that you wanted to do more, that you wanted to to be that kind of a leader? I just knew I wanted to go in the Army and serve right. and uh, and lead. Uh, where that took me, uh, I kind of let the Army decide that. You know, I just, you just go, every leader, they, they, they choose their own path and they just got to they got to figure out what their path is right. and what what their leadership style is and then you go out and you just give your 100% and uh what happens happens right. you know and and some some succeed and and some fall by the wayside right. sometimes but uh if you just get out there and give your best take care of your people uh make the best decisions you can make uh, you know there's no there's no greater leadership challenge for a leader than being a leader in combat right. i mean that's uh that's that's the greatest leadership challenge out there, and and uh, you know because that's what that's what your army is here for. Sure, for be, and helping you be all you can be. Absolutely, right. You know? I think I heard that somewhere. So, what would you say? What would you say? You know, I think um, so often we hear in this great country of ours, we hear people talk about there's no opportunity. It's so hard to change your lot in life. Right. And, you know, then you say to them, well, there are, there are unbelievable opportunities in the armed forces. Right. You could always go and start that way. And then they go, oh, yeah, I don't want to do that. Right. What would you say to uh, to a young kid, a 16, 17 year old who's not exactly sure what they want to do? Would you recommend uh, joining? Absolutely. You know, and here's the thing. You make it. It is all up to you. Right. It is all up to you, the individual. You get in there and you give your 110 percent. You're going to be successful. Sure, and and you get in and do the right thing. You know, as as I as I tell tell my kids, life is about choices. Sure, uh, you make the right choices, you make the wrong choices, and you know if you get in there, you, you keep your nose clean and you work hard, uh, you can be anybody can be successful in the army. That's awesome. So and so, let me ask you for you personally, how long uh, how long until you're uh, they put you out to pasture and you go do something else? <laughs> Oh, that I, I don't know. You know, uh, you know the the eventually it yeah. ends. Yeah. Uh, the 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 road ends, and so that is that is up to the army. Have you thought about your next stage, like what you want to do or anything, or are you just like, no, we're just doing this now, and we're going to do the best we can with you this? You know, I, I've kind of always taken on life as uh, I I live in the moment. Cool. Uh, and uh, what happens happens. You know. Yeah. Uh, we, we always seem, and it just always seems to work out. You focus on what your job is and, and what you do, and, and 
Right. We're good. Absolutely. All right. I have to do it. We give you a magic wand, oh. the pixie dust, the fairy okay. dust, the ability just to wiggle your nose, although you're not doing that. Uh, just to make something happen, that's a whole bewitched reference, and you're just not doing that. So uh, what are you going to do, Colonel uh, Sanders, the third Colonel David Sanders, the third? What am I going to do after? Yeah, what are you doing? No, what do you do with the magic wand? Oh, what do I do with the magic wand? Oh, yeah. my gosh. Um, uh, I'd make the army a lot bigger. Yeah? <laughs> That's what I would do. Yep. Uh, yep. Make, the, and, uh, make, make the army a lot bigger. Make, make the make the military make the military a little bigger and yeah. uh, uh, make sure that we have the you know resource we need, which we get the majority of it. I, and uh, I know we're not talking politics, but I'll throw this out at you. You're not you're not a big believer in the fact that there is uh, that there's no need for a, a a large armed forces at this point because world conflicts are are not an issue, right? Well, I, I would say just take a look at history. Yep. And uh, you know history, uh, those you don't look at it tend to repeat it. So uh, I just take a look at history there, and I think you, the, the answer is there. All right. Well, listen, uh, Colonel David Sanders III, uh, I, I will tell you, uh, I am so, first of all, thank you for all you do, all you do, all you've done for our country. Uh, really, it, it is, uh, you know, I, I like to always think of myself as one of those people that uh, when I see uh, when I see our our uh, our our folks in uniform uh, out in the community, I, I always like to, you know, pay their bill, do what I can just to show our little bit of our little bit of support. Um, not that I'm buying your donuts today, but but I'm just saying. Listen, I, I think uh, you guys. Uh, I, I don't even know how how I, we could possibly repay you for all that you do to uh, preserve our freedom. And uh, I, for one, get angry when people uh, you know complain about our country because I think we live in the greatest country in the world. And uh, and it's only because of our freedom that we're allowed to complain the way we are. So uh, thank you for all that you do, and uh, it's been an honor talking to you today. Absolutely, and I want to just thank the local community. I mean, uh, everybody around here, uh, Ocean County uh, and the surrounding areas around the base have been nothing but support uh, supporting the base, and uh, we just appreciate it. Very nice. Very nice. Well, listen, uh, uh, thank you very much, and I think it's time for you now to go downstairs and harvest some donuts, okay? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Jeremy, thank you for having me, and uh, I really enjoyed it. You, wait, have, you have a great day. Okay, wake up with Jeremy Grunner. Back after this.